In the first part of this tutorial, we have seen how to work in a graph editor and some basic functionalities in it. Now in this second part, we will look into some more aspects of a graph editor. For this tutorial, we have a simple scene where a white ball is bouncing between these two walls while moving towards us and it is rolling as well. So, we have added keyframes for these four fields, XY locations and XY rotations. We will work with these fields in a graph editor. So let us select the ball and open the graph editor from here. In the first part, we have learned how to change the interpolation type and how to change the shape of this curve, the F curve. Let us now learn about some basic navigation. You can zoom in or zoom out using the mouse wheel. It follows mostly the same design as that of the other editors, but it does not zoom in the X direction. So we can use another technique to zoom in or zoom out for a better control. Press the control key and then press the middle mouse button or press the wheel of your mouse. If you then move the mouse upward, it will zoom into the view. And if you move the mouse downward, it will zoom out. And similarly, you can zoom in or zoom out in the X dimension by moving the mouse in the left or in the right direction. By combining these two, you can achieve the perfect zoom that you need for working on any particular curve area. Once you zoom in, you may need to reposition the view, so press the shift key and the middle mouse button. You can then move your mouse to pan around this editor, it works same as the 3D viewport. Now, all the keyframes are selected here by default. You can deselect them and select any number of keyframes with a selection box. Or you can directly select any keyframe like this. The curve that contains that keyframe gets highlighted. And, if you want to select all other keyframes that are on this curve, then press Ale on your keyboard and it will select all the points on this curve or all the points that are linked together. And to select all the keyframes for all the graphs, you can press A, which means all. Now, if you select a particular key point and you want to zoom in there, press the decimal key on your number keypad, not the main keyboard. These shortcuts are same as we have in the 3D viewport. You can even move the points or the graph as a whole to change their position. Let us select all the points by pressing the A key on the keyboard. Then press G to grab. And you can now move the mouse to change the position of a graph. To accept a change, simply click on your mouse. We'll see a practical use of this very soon in an example, but let us first undo this. You might have noticed one thing, we have added keyframes for four different fields. And we can see four different channels in this list as well. But only two graphs are visible in this panel. We know that this red curve is for the X location. And this green one is for the Y location. So you may ask, where are the graphs for these two fields? Well, they are actually there in this panel itself. We need to zoom out in order to see them. Go further out and you will be able to see them right here, both of them. So this graph is for the Y rotation keys. And this graph is for the X rotation. They look quite similar to the location curves because the rotations and the displacements of an object are interlinked to each other. But when we zoom out to work on these two bigger graphs, the other two graphs are so small that we cannot even see them. This happens simply because these rotation values are much higher than the location values in their absolute terms. You can see that the rotation values are in the range of hundreds, while these are just few units. So when you see these graphs, the other two become tiny and little. And if you zoom in to look at the location curves, the bigger ones are now so big that you cannot see them in this window. But if you still want to see all the graphs in one single window, there is a way to do that. You have to use this option called Normalize. If you turn it on, Blender will display all the graphs together in a normalized form. The graphs are converted so that they fit into this window. They are now restricted between 1 and minus 1. This is only for the display purpose, no real change for the curves. This value no longer shows the real value of a curve or a keyframe, it is just a normalized version of the curves in the same proportion of their actual values. It helps us to work on multiple graphs, having a difference in their magnitudes. Next, we'll see how we can copy this same curve to some other object. So let us go back to the 3D viewport. Here, we'll add another object, and we won't define its movement. It will inherit the keyframes from the sphere, and then it will follow the same path as that of the sphere. So, let us go to the Add menu and add one cube. But the sphere now got hidden behind this cube. 
So, let us pull it up little bit, in the Z direction, maybe by, say 5 units. The height of the cube will not change, but will copy paste the X and Y curves from the sphere, to the cube, so while the sphere moves along this path, the cube should follow it, staying above the sphere. Let us now go back to the graph editor. We have to first select the icosphere. By default, all the keyframes are selected here. If not, press A on your keyboard to select all the keyframes. Now, go to the key menu, and copy the keyframes. All data will get copied into the clipboard. Then, select the cube. Before we can paste the keyframes here, we have to first create the necessary channels for the cube object. So, on its X location and Y location, let us insert a keyframe. The actual values do not really matter because we're anyway going to overwrite them. And this has created two channels in this graph editor. Now go to the key menu and paste the keyframes from here. You will see that the same graphs for the X and Y location have been duplicated here from the icosphere. An interesting point is, in case of the icosphere, we had these rotations as well. So when we copied all the graphs, the rotations also got copied along with it. But when we applied them for the cube, we got only two graphs over here. Since we created only two channels, Blender added only those two graphs. It did not add any keyframes for the rotation values, only the location curves are duplicated. So with this, the cube should follow the same motion as that of the icosphere. Let us verify it once in the viewport. If we run the animation from the beginning, we can see that the cube is moving just like the sphere in the same fashion, but five units above the ground plane. Blender has actually added keyframes to the cube. Even if we now delete the sphere, it will still work. And let us say, we want the cube to move along this path, with some delay. The sphere moves first on this path, and the cube follows behind it, with some lag. We can easily do that as well, using the graph editor. Let us go there. We have these two graphs here, for the cube's movement. So select all the keyframes. Then press G on your keyboard, to move it. Then press X, to lock it on the horizontal line and move the mouse slightly like this, and click once to accept the change. Now all the keyframes got shifted, by this much amount. Let us go back to the 3D viewport. If we now run the animation, we can see that the sphere moves as it is, and the cube moves along with it, but with some time lag. This is exactly what we wanted. You can use the graph editor in many ways, to create effective animation, and to control the movements as per your requirement. When we work on multiple curves in one editor, and we try to make some changes to them, it is easy to accidentally change one curve, while trying to actually edit the other one. So you can use these locks to avoid it. Let's say we want to work on this, X location curve. So we can lock this Y location curve. Now the Y location graph won't change even accidentally, while doing any editing. If you try to move them, only the unlocked curves, or the free curves will move, the locked curves will not get affected. In the first part of this tutorial, we learn how to change the shape of a curve, and how to customize the interpolation type of any curve segment, by changing this interpolation mode. We'll now look at more delicate ways to customize a graph, through advanced settings. So let us open the side panel. You can also hide or display this panel by pressing the N key on your keyboard. Now, if you select any particular keyframe, the details of that keyframe get displayed, over here. You can change the interpolation mode from here, for example, if you change it to say quartic, the shape of the curve changes between this keyframe and the next keyframe. Similarly, if we change it to linear, this portion of the curve will change accordingly. And when we change it to bezier, we get these handles on both sides of the keyframe, we can use these handles to modify the shape of the curve visually. You can also change the type of this handle, from here. Let us say, we change the left hand side handle type to, free. Now, you can easily move this handle and modify the curve in any direction, it does not affect the other side of the curve. But if we change the handle type, to aligned, the two sides of the handle will be interlinked. Changing any one side will impact the other as well, resulting into a smooth change of the curve at the key point. If you want, you can also move the keyframe, like any object. First select the key point, and press G on your keyboard. Now you can move your mouse to any direction, and the key point will move. To accept a change, click once when you are done with the modification. The last thing to discuss is, 
you have seen that we have duplicated these graphs from that of the icosphere. While this works just fine for a simple motion, it fails when you have some modifiers added to your original curve. Let us say, if we have some modifiers for the icosphere, and we copy the keyframes to another object, the modifiers do not get copied here. Also, if you have many such objects, and you want to copy the motion curves from one object, to multiple other objects, this method may be time-taking. We need a better way to copy motion curves, so in the next part, we will learn about another method, where the modifiers also get copied. We'll deep dive into the modifiers, and discuss few more important topics in the third part, to complete this series on Graph Editor. I hope you find this tutorial helpful in making custom animations. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.